Hey there everybody, welcome back to the penultimate update for Silent Hill for the Room. Well, we already got some reading material in front of apartment 302. And what is in this diary? But, well, this is actually a recounting from Frank Sunderland in regards to the, well, man we now know as Walter, our grown-up Walter, in his bloodied coat. And, well, apparently Walter went up to room 302 and never came back out again. And apparently after he never came back out, well, that's when all these strange noises and real odd goings-on actually started in room 302. And just in case you didn't know, it was... Frank Sunderland. But with that, I think it's time to check out what's waiting for us down here at the bottom in room 302. And wouldn't you know it, it actually is... Well, at least a gray facsimile of apartment 302. And when I say gray, I mean everything is washed out and kind of colorless. Also, the nice candles laying about. They might be holy candles, they might not. Yeah, we can't actually pick up any of them, but we can pick up some more reading material. And you may recognize this little storybook. We actually saw this during the intro as Joseph Schreiber. Which is kind of, well, it's kind of hard to say whether or not Walter actually wrote this himself, or maybe his mind basically manifested a backstory. But it does actually fill in some gaps further at the end that were actually cut off, which is this part right here. Basically, the ritual was not actually meant to wake up his mother. It was actually meant to wake up a devil. And, well, that obviously didn't make the baby, a.k.a. Walter, very happy. But he remembered the connection, the physical connection he had with his mother, which was the umbilical cord, and the magical cord came down from heaven and allowed him to actually go to sleep. This is some of the most obvious symbolism, but in case you uh, couldn't put two and two together, well, we have the Crimson Tome, which is not the actual Crimson Tome used by the Order. Rather, this is almost a, uh, well, a tract against the Order. Kind of points out some, well, fallacies, I suppose, regarding their uh, 21 sacraments their gods and so forth it does get a bit repetitive in regards to oh no you're not going to resurrect a god you're going to resurrect a devil you're not you know committing sacraments you're committing heresies it's uh it's kind of dumb but um we do actually get some very important information regarding well, we apparently had to find a conjurer and bury his mother's flesh in him and we also have to drive eight spears into the conjurer's body. His real body. And that's the important thing. Because what we've been seeing so far is just... Well, kind of the ghostly apparition that Walter managed to manifest for himself. But, go ahead and explore the rest of the apartment. It's actually kind of interesting to see it in an actual... Uh, normal game environment. As you can see we have two messages waiting for us here at the end of the hallway. can only assume maybe they were written by Joseph Schreiber. We also see an open portal in the bathroom. But before we deal with any of that, in the bedroom with a nice contrast of colors, we find more red pages. Mm -hmm. 
And this particular piece of reading material, oddly enough, is pretty much, well, for lack of a better set of words, this were, was pretty much Joseph Schreiber's final thoughts before he was, well, we can assume to be killed by Jimmy Stone, ghost number one. The only thing that is different, and maybe alludes to the fact that Joseph was actually writing this before his untimely demise, is the final set of words, what the hell am I writing? Seems that maybe he was getting fed information himself, and he didn't always really realize what it was actually meaning. Thankfully, the other pieces of paper are not uh, not quite as involved. Yet again, a mention of the wall outside. Let's see what this one says. And it almost seems like these were more or less not complete thoughts, but just notes from Joseph, especially when he starts to use uh, mathematical symbols to just kind of replace words. But just in case you did not read the crimson tome that was in the living room, well, here you go, here's another clue. And by clue, I mean blatantly telling you what to do. We'll, uh, We'll be getting uh, beaten over the head some more with, uh, well, the story, all one paragraph of it. But it doesn't look like there's much else in the room. And before we head back, I, I think we missed something. Find him. His 
true location. It must be nearby. You must kill him. You must kill him. Kill. 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 I'm sorry, Joe. What what did you want us to do to Walter? I I totally missed it. Yeah, yet again we are reminded of the plot overall. We also get oh, is it a brand new weapon? We already do have one pickaxe, and I guess we might as well have a matching set. But hey, this one's even better. It's the pickaxe of hope. Metaphor. Sadly, though, the Pickaxe of Hope is not a weapon. It's just a usable item. Maybe we can use it on the wall. Oh, nope. We cannot use it on the wall. So with nowhere else to go in this pseudo-apartment, I guess it's time to head back. Jimmy Stone is waiting for us yet again, interrupting any uh, other hauntings from going on. But I have plenty of holy candles to fix his slimy, gooey red wagon. dealing with him for too much longer. We, uh, we are getting very, very close to figuring out, well, how to get out of the apartment. And we are now haunting free, but, oh, there's another note for us waiting under the door. Sadly, at this point in the game, they've kind of, well, run out of information that they really need to give us. This just kind of goes over the victim list rather vaguely. I mean, uh, it doesn't even tell us who the Void, Darkness, and Gloom are, but I'll be talking, ab the, well, talking about, the, about them a bit more in the thread itself. But it is, uh, I don't know, it's not even surprising the fact that we are the receiver of wisdom and that Eileen, pretty much the only female character left, is the mother. But using our deductive powers, we can assume that, well, there was a semi-cracked wall in the pseudo-apartment. By using the pickaxe, we find a secret room in the wall. Let's check it out.
And what do you know, Walter actually never left room 302. Now, this does leave a rather odd question of, you know, who took a spoon to the neck in prison in Walter's place, or is this just a ghostly apparition? It's a bit hard to explain. But, well, we're going to be left with a few unanswered questions, even when the end of the game comes around, but we do have a few references to the resurrection ritual, such as the white oil, which could be White Claudia. And though it's a bit hard to target, no, I don't want to look at the oil. There we go. Yeah, we have the Obsidian Bowl. These were actually quite, these were pretty much all items that you had to get in, the, in Silent Hill 2 for the optional resurrection ending. And he is quite a looker. Now, it does mention tubes running out of Walter. It could very well be that he drained himself of blood, or instead was actually getting blood pumped into him, but no, let's see what he has on him. Well, there's something in his coat. And for some reason we have to investigate him again to actually get the contents of the coat, but... Keys of Liberation, that sounds well, right up our alley, even though apparently they are evil-looking keys. I'm not actually sure, maybe they have skulls on them, who knows. But you can see the numbering of victim number 11 on his feet. There's also some strange black fluid. Hmm, not really sure what that is. Also see some blood in a little mini fridge. Whether or not this was the blood he drained out of the hearts of his first ten victims, more than likely. This is probably the site of the Holy Assumption ritual. It does kind of make me wonder, well, who boarded back up the wall, but let's go with magic. But we now have the key to the front door. Just take one last check outside, make sure nothing weird's going on out there, no? Just the same old handprints from the same old victims. For before though that we uh, head out, just double check for any hauntings, you never know. Also, I want to go ahead and stock up because uh, well, it's a brave new world outside of the apartment, and I want to make sure we're ready for it. And when I say ready, I mean it's the end of the game, and it's, well, time to use our dick gun. And also, might as well make sure we have something to drink on the way out. But I think we are ready. Let's go ahead and get this bitch open. Well, as soon as I target the right thing.
Eileen! That's that awkward cut. This is our apartment building, but now it looks like some kind of nightmare. Yeah, when I uh, might have mentioned that we weren't going to be doing any more backtracking, uh, I kind of lied. We have one more uh, bit of backtracking to do. Uh, I mean, we uh, we finally got out of the apartment. We are actually in the real solid world. But it also looks like uh, Walter's holy assumption is kind of bleeding out into reality. It's kind of like the plot of Cool World. And that means more enemies. But thankfully, Richard's revolver, well, there's a reason why you don't get very many bullets for it, and that's because it's an amazing weapon. While only holding six shots, one shot will pretty much down every normal enemy in the game. It's uh, actually pretty nice. And you might be able to hear something shifting around on the floor below us. Well, that is that lovely thing waiting, waiting for us right there. And yeah, it's, well, it, it's called a new enemy, but realistically, it's just a reskin of the twin victim. And it has the rather awkward name of a bottom. So if you if it makes you feel any better, you can just keep on mentally saying I'm spanking the bottoms, because we are definitely going to be seeing more of them. And uh, well, Richard's revolver is thankfully going to make some rather short work of this area. So if you are playing along at home, hopefully you did save all of your revolver bullets, because it actually makes this uh, last little jaunt. And yet again, much like Building World, I actually feel like uh, the additions they made to the sound design for, well, revisiting Apartment World, I guess you could call it, is actually rather nice. Well, nice in the sense of it's macabre and ghoulish. Thankfully, the journey is a pretty linear one. There are a few tricky traps. It might be kind of hard to see. But on the other side of that gate is Walter. <laughs> packing uh, some double barrel twin action waiting for us. Just in case you didn't see. Well, I'm not going to get shot for you. I'm not stupid. But we do get to re revisit some rather familiar locales from the original visit through the apartments. You may remember the painter and the nurse's love affair. For some reason though, they actually don't allow you to investigate the paintings again. They all just have kind of the same generic message. But we all remember the drunk and the elderly couple. They're memorable. And we do get our final sort of obedience, but at this point in the game we honestly don't need it. Any ghosts that were going to be a problem have been dealt with. And trust me, all like all of the ghosts will pretty much show up except Jasper for some reason. Jasper does not make another appearance in uh, the revisiting. Well, the revisiting to a park floor. And we could deal with Cynthia, but uh, one bullet's enough for her. So while quite a bit of uh, the revisiting to apartment world is optional, it is a good idea to check in every one of the apartments. They all have new nice items waiting for us. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I know. I know your game. It 
it pretty much uh, you're going to be guaranteed a hit if you try to run across there and there's actually no reason to go over here there are no items there are no goodies it's just a good chance to get shot at thankfully though as we'll be seeing they give you a lot of healing items for some reason maybe they assume you were going to be uh, beaten by all the horrible combat hey I mean you got a you got a competent LP here directing you through this horrible gauntlet of death skill shot yeah I'll, I'll, I, I will be quite frank and say I didn't even know you could do that. I, I honestly thought that bullets stopped at one enemy. But apparently with Richard's revolver, you know you got that penetrating power that you would uh, normally assume from any dick gun. But if we go back up the flight of stairs, we find handgun bullets. And I do apologize, you, you can go back to Eileen's apartment. And there are revolver bullets in there, but uh, I think we'll be okay. I think we might maybe be okay. We are, we, we're running a bit low. As you can probably assume, our inevitable destination is actually going to be back on the first floor in the super... You can't get out of here? Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll actually be going down to the superintendent's room to get that umbilical cord, because apparently that's our key to success. In case you didn't read the crimson tome, the note specifying it, or you did not pay attention to Joseph Schreiber's upside down uh, obsidian statue. They really, really, I guess, wanted to make sure you knew exactly what to do. Nope. Guess who's quicker on the draw? Dick gun. This particular situation can go either very badly or incredibly awful, but if you are ready and you don't mind wasting a few precious bullets, well, you can take Walter down, and I guess it does kind of make sense. This was a very family-oriented apartment. But as you can imagine, it would be uh, quite a pain to actually deal with Walter chasing after us and shooting in these uh, very confined spaces. And what's waiting for us in Tricky Dick's room? Well, sadly, not revolver bullets, just normal handgun bullets. Hopefully you don't mind if I don't pick them up. Bottoms up. Ha 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 ha. Never, I'm sorry. And we are down to our last six, but we are actually almost to the uh, the first floor, which means well, we should be right next to our goal. Hopefully you enjoyed that soundbite because, well, you get to hear it uh, pretty much constantly in this wing of the first floor. It is actually the first time we've heard Walter mention any kind of concern for his father. We've heard him bring up his mother quite a bit, 
But the rather interesting part of what he is saying is the fact that he can't see his dad's face. Now we've never heard him say anything about not seeing his mother's face. And it might be an allusion to well, a portion of the brainwashing that the Order did on Walter. But that portion of the brainwashing is only ever brought up in the Crimson Tome are the Crimson Tone pages from the Konami Silent Hill 4 website. But just to go into a quick, quick explanation, Walter was pretty much being brainwashed by the Vatel cult, uh, or the Vatel sect of the Order. And he was basically being made into a future avatar of Pyramid Head. If that sounds incredibly stupid to you, well, it is. There's no reason to make more pyramid heads. Kind of looking at you, Silent Hill Homecoming. But I think, at least in my assumption, that that might actually be why he's saying he can't see his dad's face. They, the order might have actually ingrained the thought into him that, well, that faceless. Pyramid Head was actually his father. Yet again, that's just assumption on my part. It could mean nothing, but... Yeah, we already see the superintendent's room. It's apparently on lockdown. And we're gonna have to figure out a way to get in there. Hopefully, with the limited amount of area we have left to cover, we're not going to have to figure out where six keys are in this entire apartment building. We have a little sketchbook here in the center of the floor. And this just kind of makes me think even more. It's a vaguely pyramid-shaped head, but honestly, it would be such a bizarre idea to introduce into the game. But as you can tell, there is no portal on the wall, and that's because, yet again, well, as I said, we're in the real world. There's, well, the only way to get back to our apartment is actually walking up there. Dialeen rather uh, vexed by something. Maybe a sketchbook. Oh, thank God. So tired of hearing, Dad! Dad, where's your face? But yeah. So with these last set of rooms, we still have plenty of dangers to worry about. Optional dangers, nonetheless. And I really don't care about that mad kid enough to be slapped around by Wallman, but we have here. I told you we should have a baby, didn't I? Well, since we are in the center of Walter's subconscious, personified in real life, well, that was his dad. Or at least what we assume to be his dad. I'm not really sure how a newborn would be cognitive enough to know about his dad or what he was saying, but there you go. Yeah, there are six of these hanging, long-haired, straight-jacketed, uh... Oh, shut the hell up! You can't blame it all on me! There are six of these wonderful memories that we, uh, need to find in these last remaining areas. And that's great. As you can probably tell, there is definitely going to be a running theme with them.
definitely seems as if uh, Walter's father was maybe not the best guy in the world. Somehow or another, we have pretty much filled up our inventory. It actually is kind of a good idea we've gone through so many of our revolver bullets because otherwise we would have ran out of space. Our good friend Jimmy Stone. How's it going, Jimmy? And rather oddly, after we hear that particular memory, well, Jimmy Sloan go or Jimmy Stone goes down permanently. Our soul. We will not be seeing Mr. Stone anymore for the course of the game. At least I hope so. You can never be sure with the hauntings. of a tortured soul. But we still have uh, plenty of prop guns in case we ever wanted to, I guess, just scare Walter. But it is time for our final memory, and what do we got? There you go, mystery solved. Walter's parents weren't killed by the order in some kind of contrived uh, attempt to get Walter. No, they literally just did not want to deal with Walter. And from having dealt with him ourselves, I can pretty much see where they're coming from. With that, we should have all six memories, or six chains, detached from the superintendent's doors. And we should probably make sure that Eileen is doing okay. She was kind of staring at the ground the last time we saw her. Eileen? Like Eileen is really, really uh, jumping into the whole mother reborn role. Maybe she's uh, forgetting that it's going to mean her death. But it is time now to get what we came here for, which, if you recall, was right here in a small red box. Just need to make some room for it. It's umbilical cord time.
going back, Henry, to the room where he is. We're the only ones. The only ones that can stop him. that we have our well MacGuffin to hopefully help us take down Walter. We also received a quick little glance at what we can assume to be Walter's parents. Yet again I still am a bit unsure how a newborn that has not seen his parents since a long time ago would somehow have some recollection of what they looked like or how they sounded. But if you remember one of Joseph note one of Joseph Schreiber's notes mentioned the tolling of a bell it would actually signal the blood of the mother reborn being spilt. And somehow this stick figure is a woman. No no idea on that one. But Well maybe it wasn't the best idea to let Eileen go back by herself, so who's up for some more backtracking? I know I am. Normally, I would edit this out, except, well, that cinematic we saw with the well, twin victims and bottoms. It wasn't just for show, there actually are a few more enemies to deal with. So a rather nasty wall men there that can catch you by surprise. But the real trouble comes in the next hallway where our two bullets might not be enough for the Jesus Christ, the three bottoms and one twin victim in a small room. Or hallway I should say. Yeah, you that's that would be just a losing fight all the way. in our time before we get back to the apartment, which is our destination, I do kind of want to bring up the fact that, well, we've never actually seen any direct words from Walter's mother. We've never heard her voice, we've never really gotten an idea of what she's like, and, well, you almost kind of want to assume that the idea of the mother being good it was actually just something ingrained into Walter for trying to get the descent of the Holy Mother together. And maybe motivating him that his dad was an evil bastard you know, allowed Pyramid Head or Vitell to really take hold, but little Walter's waiting for us to save him. And yet again, Jimmy Stone, poor, poor Jimmy Stone, 
He just does not know when to quit. But as the candle runs down, we are uh, fairly well equipped to deal with anything ahead of us, I think. But I think, uh, well, first, no hauntings. I actually don't think there can ever be two hauntings at once, but I might be wrong. We have quite an assortment of items, and, well, we're not actually going to be needing most of them. But I do want to keep an ampule, just in case. And regarding a weapon, well, hmm, I guess we're just going to have to see what I pick in the next video. Because I think we are running a bit long. But next time we are going to be going back into the hole and we're going to have a final showdown with Walter. So hopefully you'll join me next time for the final update of Silent Hill for the Room.